for an object or not. Can't do that. All right. I'll call the order at 705. It's going to be close to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First up, we have the U.S. Citizens Forum Head Dad. Can anyone fill that card? Yeah. Okay. We have Head Dad. First up, we have the public hearing scheduled on the proposed fiscal year 2017-2000 budget to provide an opportunity for citizen comment to tell me adopt the budget with or without any amendment. So, this is our third go round. We uh, proposed the budget two months ago. Last month, we discussed it. Public hearing didn't change any numbers, so we're back. Um, no numbers are changed in the council packet from the previous two months. So, again, this is an opportunity for anyone on the floor if you have a question about a number, if you want a clarification on a number, if you have any comments about a number, this is your opportunity for the floor. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Okay. Right. Anyone want to make a motion to close the public hearing? I have a motion to close the hearing, and I have a second to close. All those in favor? Okay. All right, next up we have a public hearing is scheduled on the proposed uh, property tax rate of 30 cents per $10 to provide a receipt of So we have a public hearing on the tax rate. We had one again last month. Same tax rate for the last 41 years, same number. Um, year 41, um, our tax rate. So it's going to stay the same. The five cent on the debt servicing will continue. We have year four. As I've said in the mayor's letter, I think we will get rid of it in year eight. It's a 10 year note that we did. We're ahead of schedule. We start paying it off early starting next year. We can make additional payments to pay off the debt. So we'll cross that bridge next year. But, uh, no change in the tax rate, same tax rate. That's cool. You know, I had, I had a citizen, a citizen told me once that um, they were kind of upset their, ta their, their, their tax bill had gone up. I said, okay, but the reason why your tax bill went up is because the value of your house went up. So think about Lakewood Village. I can't control the school board. But if your house goes up $100,000, in value, if you, if your investment goes up 100000 then you pay Lakewood Village $300. So if I said to you, give me something worth hundred grand, and you pay $300 for it, it's a pretty good deal. So that's really what's going on here, is the values are going up. Your, your, your investment in the city is becoming much more valuable. And so, that's actually what's going on. So, you know, no one wants to pay more taxes, but it's for the right reason, if you will. Uh, you know, to, in, in my view, that's a trade off I'll make every day. If you want to pay $300 and you give me $100,000 worth of value, I'll take it. But, uh, that, that's kind of what's going on. Does anyone have any questions about the tax rate? I'll just throw a comment on that. The concern that, in general, conservative people have is that the amount of taxes that you're collecting continues to go up, even though the rates didn't change. So while, from a, a budget standpoint, it's nice that the government's taking in more money, it's still the people's money. So the really concern that I have is, how are you running efficiently? In other words, you shouldn't need any more money year to year. You should probably use less money. So as you continue to take more and more money in, the government grows, the budget grows. That's the watch out that governments need to take care of. The only argument to that is the fact that costs continue to increase. Wages continue to increase. So that is obviously a detriment to your... But the number of homes will increase, increase too, which will increase that. Excuse me? You, we're increasing in the number of homes too that should offset that. Yeah, but I'm saying the cost of the city doing business, our contractors, our suppliers, things cost more money. So just like your groceries, just like things that yeah. Okay, so right now tax rate stays the same. So what will happen is the tax rate is embedded in the budget. 
and then next month we have to approve the tax rate. So the tax rate is not up for approval at this meeting. We have to do things in a certain logical progression according to the state. So, um, but the, the tax rate is embedded in the budget, and it's the same number as we talked about. Okay? Any more questions? Okay, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? I make a motion we close the public hearing on the tax rate. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Two seconds. Okay. All those in favor? Okay, very good. All right, thank you. So that ends the public hearing. All right, next up we have the consideration of the MDD 2017-2018 budget. The MDD met a couple weeks ago and uh, passed their budget. It's a pretty conservative budget. Um, right now, I've talked with uh, Eric Farage, who is the uh, president of the MDD. And uh, basically, what they're doing is they've made some conservative estimates and they're setting aside $10,000 potentially for a project that they have not yet decided what it's going to be, as far as I know. They'll let us know. Um, but that's their budget. Um, I don't see any of the budget that's out of line. It's all pretty much lines up with what they've done in the past. The water system makes a profit. Um, sales tax is continuing to climb, just like with the city. They're, they have no debt. They actually have about, last time I checked, they have somewhere in the neighborhood of about $10,000 in the bank. So they're accumulating funds now. Um, and they're debt free. Okay, so that is the MDD budget. Linda, Linda sits on the MDD. I don't think Daryl is on the MDD, right? So we have Daryl, we have Linda. Do you two have anything else to add? Sure. Mm, can't think of anything. It's pretty easy to do. Okay. Do I have a motion on the MDD budget? I have a motion to the budget. Approved. 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 Okay, I have a motion to approve the MDD budget. And a second. And a second. All those in favor? Okay, very good. MDD budget's approved. All right, next up we have consideration of the 17-18 budget. All right, same numbers as we've had the last two months. Um, I didn't change any numbers. We have the final numbers in from DCAD. Uh, the uh, final numbers came in basically with uh, about a 7% about increase year on year is the, uh, is the, is the uh, DCAD numbers. So again, that's, that's based on appreciation. Uh, mine went up 40%. So. But numbers haven't changed, same numbers as last time. CapEx numbers, we're looking now, uh, we put 75 in there. Uh, one of the things for the CapEx was the, uh, the new wait, uh, lift station issue. We now think that we've resolved that. We'll be able to do that uh, less expensively. So that's a good sign. We're trying to put in some new sensor platform and new electronics, and we think we can uh, get away with doing it uh, cheaper than what we have in the budget. That's that. Um, the other thing for CapEx project there was the um, was putting in another fire hydrant on Parkwood. Clint, can you pull that up? So this is something, uh, it, it got left out of the council packet. So back in 2014, what we did was we had to start looking ahead for the concrete streets. And one of the things that we did was there were only three fire hydrants in this part of town. In the whole, in the five streets, there were only three hydrants. The closest hydrant for most of the area over here was actually in Sunrise Bay, which is not a good plan. Um, so the problem with a fire hydrant is it's got to be on a six inch line. You can't put a fire hydrant on a four inch water line, it's got to be on a six inch water line. So the blue line up here at the top. And we were doing this, this was before the concrete road. This is 2014, right before we started doing the bidding on the road, was this blue line here for Lakecrest, outside this window, that whole street there was serviced by a two-inch line, which is the same size of the line that services my house. It was the whole line on this entire street. So that main went out, we had to put in a six-inch main along here, we put in these three fire hydrants. 
Yeah, we started. It was even worse than that if you're on the north side of the street because you shared the connection with your neighbor. And then they also took the line that was onto the street and split it. So they only put in half as many lines under the street to get to the other side, and then you share the water. So it was um, so hot. So what we tried to work out was in order to put in and hydrate that whole side of town, to make it now meet code, modern code, um, we had to install six inch line in places because you can't put it. It's got to be on a six inch line. And the problem is we don't have a lot of six inch line in town. The six inch line runs along hillside. This was the main, main, main for the city. For some reason they chose hillside. And of course we had shoreline. So we started, we extended under the streets, these ones here, trying to get some things in order. But this was part of our big plan to hydrate the rest of the town over here. So Clay, could you go to the next um, sheet? So this was the plan. These are the places where all the fire hydrants were going to go, all of them in mid-block. And we we're going to have to put in all new six-inch line in various places. So we've done all these here. We've done all of these here. We've done these here. Uh, this is what we're talking about now is doing this area right here. Uh, in order to do the mid-block one here, we have to go under some driveways. So we're working on it because we're not going to solve the driveways. But there's no six-inch line on the peninsula. So we're working on trying to come up with that. Um, the, the easiest one for us right now to do is Park Wood here has no fire hydrants at all. It's the only street in the city that doesn't have a single one. That's inexcusable. You can't have a street in a modern city that has no fire hydrant on it at all. So, um, in this plan, what we're talking about, this fire hydrant already exists. This is the one we're talking about now, is doing this one right here in, in this budget site. Okay, so, we've, we've hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. I think this would make 10 out of the 14 that would be done. Out of 11. So we got 11 out of 14. But this was the long range plan. This is what was approved back in 2014. Obviously, not to put them all, but that was the plan that was approved. Part of this also, analogously, later on in the, in the meeting, we'll talk about dark skies. That's part of this kind of same kind of way ahead plan before the concrete roads come in, trying to think way out there and trying to figure out some things way in advance. So that's the CapEx on the budget. No other number changed in the entire budget. Um, so uh, as far as I know from Linda, no one in the last two months has made any data requests or looked for any historical data or requested any data. So, does anybody want to change a number? I'll ask the same thing that I asked last month. If not, then I'd like a motion that we approve the budget. Does everybody want to change anything? Uh, you, know, you and I met with um, Kimberly Horn, and the numbers that we had in are still good. So, there's no reason to change any of those assumptions. Yeah, so we did check with the engineering. That looks good. Um, like I say, this 75 is probably high, but that's okay. Um, if that's a worst case scenario, we're going to commit it. If you look at the, I'm sorry, is the cover sheet in there, Linda? Yeah, I think I can look at the spreadsheet. Yeah, back to the, yeah. Okay, so the ordinance itself, where is the spreadsheet? The ordinance itself, or? Go to the ordinance itself, I think it's page three. Uh, go, go back up where the one is. Yeah. Okay, so what these things here are, so the way this works is, is this, this number right here, it's hard to read. The effective tax rate yes, right. is, right. the effective tax rate is, what would the tax rate need to be in order for you to generate exactly the same number of dollars as last year? So if, you're, if your houses are increasing in value, then that would be the tax rate. So our tax rate, this is maintenance and operations to 25 cents. So if we want to generate the exact same amount as last year, we would lower the tax rate to 23 and a half cents. That would generate dollar for dollar 
precisely the same amount of dollars as last year. The rollback rate is if you take the same people as this as last year and you add 8% to their to the taxes. If you collect 8% more taxes in the total in the aggregate, 8% more, that's what that tax rate is. 28 point let's see, what am I looking at? Where did it go? Where is rollback? I can't read it. Okay. So, sorry, I'm having a hard time reading it because it's so dark. Okay, so this rollback rate is if you add 8% to the tax base, you get 8% increase in total dollars collected, then that's what your rate would be if you got 8% more. Now, if our tax rate was, was higher than that, you can still do it. If you're above the rollback rate, if you get more than 8% more money than the year before, the citizens can file a petition and say, we want to roll the rate down. So you only get 8% more. You want to roll it down. There's almost never, ever, ever a rollback election. Because if you get the signatures, the city council says, OK. And they lower it back down to the 8%. They don't want to have an election. Especially because they know they're going to probably lose. Who's going to vote yes? right? So that's the rollback rate. That's the 8% increase. So typically, as long as you're between the two, then you're good because you're somewhere more money than what you had last year, but not 8% more. That's the sweet spot. But there are cities around that have a lot of growth that end up growing faster than 8% because their houses are going up and down. And then they face that issue. That's some of the areas that are, that are east of us. And they face the question, do you, do you keep the tax rate the same but get 8%, get 10% more money, keeping the tax rate the same, or do you actually lower your tax rate? Okay. We don't have that question here. Okay, so, so we're not at that point. No, we're okay. below the rollback rate. So typically you just want to be between those two numbers. Yes, I just learned that last week. There you go. Um, now for us, the issue that, that makes the wrinkle a little bit for us is that we have five cents of debt servicing. We had five cents to cover our debt. Our debt is actually 18 cents. It should be 18 there. Okay, that should be an 18, but we don't. We keep it at five. The 13 that's missing comes out of that 25. So yes, it's we're getting more money, but we're not getting it. We're actually getting back to where we were. Right? We, we took a big hit on our operating money to pay the debt. We're paying the debt with regular money, okay? if that makes any sense. Our tax rate, if we were a normal city, would be 43. It would be 18 of tax money on top of the 25. That's what every city in the Metroplex would do except Lake the Village. We don't do that. We keep it as low as we can. So that's the five. So, Ours is a little bit different. We have to do a special tax calculation every year with the taxing people because they want to make that number 18, and I have to tell them no. Put it back to five. Does that make sense? Yes. But this is the this is the calculation. The, the, this is what's at the legislature now. They're, they're arguing over whether that 8% should be a 4%. That's what they're arguing about now. At what point should you not be allowed to collect more money? That's, that's the raging debate going on in the legislature. Let's we'll see what happens. Okay? So can we go to the total sheet here? So the, the concern I have, and it's the same one I've raised the last couple months, is that you know, we're estimating that 2017 taking 415, 416. We're estimating 2018, we're going to take in 446. So 30, 40,000, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. In the mayor's letter, we, we say that uh, today we have in the bank 248,000. We expect to have over 350,000 as we build up reserves for the roads. Okay. So it's a $100,000 difference going to the road. At least that's the impression that people have. When we look at this budget, we're not putting any money towards the road. Uh, 
And if we are, um, I think it'd be great. 100 grand towards the roads, I think it'd be right about where we need to be. Uh, but I don't think that's in here. And I think that's probably the first item we should start off with is saving some money for the roads, which are left there. When you're figuring the budget on the worksheet and all that, are you taking each of those items out? What for the water system, what for the roads, all that? So on that 350000 how's that divided out? There's 12 different counts. It's all divided Well, I understand. There's 12, but I mean, it's a simple, I mean, we have so many expenses in the city to do. If you've got a budget, you take those out and whatever left over is your property or your operating. But yeah, I mean, but if we, if what's on the pages, the reserve fund. Here's, here's how we operate here, okay? If, if you want to put a line that says road reserve 100, that's fine. But then you got to put the bank accounts in there. In other words, you, 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 can't, if you, can't put a, you can't put a line here that says 100 on it because that's then going to mean we're 84,000 in the red. Well, well you, I wouldn't you, say 100, but I would put Saying hundred thousand, I'm just saying, can we put a line item and agree to an amount that may be conservative that we know that we can achieve towards that reserve fund? And we don't. I don't think you have to put the entire bank account number. I think you can X out and maybe put two or three digits of it. No, no, no. Okay. Here's here's the idea. This this budget here is in versus out. It's in and out. It's how you're balancing the money in with what goes out. Right, right, it's in yeah. Yeah, but it's 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 a flow. It's flow in and flow out. Now the reserve money that we have, we have two hundred and something thousand dollars in the bank. That's over here in a bucket. Now, if you want to take that bucket and put it on this, then we've got to take all the money in the bank and put that in here and say, this is money that's at play. We have so on the budget. Here's 142000 in the general fund that's starting up on the top line. Then on the bottom line, you say roads, road reserve, 160000 And the 16 would be the additional amount from the start to the bottom. You, you, you're mixing, you can't mix the two things together. You either have How can to you not mix them? If, you're, if you've got a total amount, if you've got 250000 and we're taking out 20,000 for this, 20,000 for this, 20,000 for this. What do you have left over? That, I mean, that's how you create a budget. Okay. I, what we're saying is, I, I actually have right a budget, Brent. I, I actually teach it, so I got it. Okay. Let, let's learn one thing here and all that stuff. This is not me against you and all that. This is a city, and this is a city where we're coming right. in and we're I'll discussing. I'll tell you what, okay. we're supposed if to work you want to talk, you raise your hand, okay? We're talking. I'm here. not a student. We're, I'm we're a citizen here. that pays taxes in this if city. If you have something to say, you can raise your hand. Then I'll recognize you. Okay, now we're talking to Elizabeth who asked a question about it. Can you put it in? It's very valid. That's the question I'm asking. If, if you want to put it in there, you, you, you've got to pick which way you want to do it. So many years ago, what we used to do is we used to put the starting balance of cash on the, on the top line. And I can show you budgets from before I was here. There was a starting cash budget. And at the end of the year, the final answer was zero. They balanced the budget, which meant they were going to end the year with zero dollars in the bank. That was made no sense. So we could put the starting balance of the, of the cash bank account. That would be like the line above all of this. Starting balance, 120,000. Then below the 16, you'd say ending balance, 136. That's that's what you would do. I think this is the question. Why wouldn't why, why can't we do that? Then? I understand we have to put it up here, what the beginning balance is, but then if down here we put a reserve line item, then you know, we know that that money is going to go to that reserve plus anything else that we may put aside for that year. In other words, the surplus is going to the reserve. I mean, if, if we, all of our money, okay, so it's not going to the reserve. That's the, the point is, our bank account is set up, that is our reserve. So for instance, we have to keep a reserve on hand that covers three months worth of operations. 
That is standard. That's a standard way to do it in Texas because we collect our taxes in December, but our fiscal year ends in September. So you're supposed to always have in the bank October, November, and December. Three months worth of stuff in the bank. So for instance, if we're our, if our expenses, our operating expenses are 214, so that means the auditor is going to come back and say, you should have about $60,000 in the bank that represents three months worth of your expenses. You should have a reserve fund sitting that has at least $60,000. Now, anything above that is good. That's why at one point we had gotten that up to like $600,000 right before we did the other conference runs. We kept building it up, building it up, building it up. We didn't say it's for concrete roads. We said it's our reserve fund. And obviously, it was for concrete roads. That's why we built it up. But we didn't put a line that said concrete road reserve. That was what we did. OK. So if, for some reason, we have to use that reserve for other than the roads, then it's really not designated for the roads. It's for whatever contingency happens, right? Yeah, that the, to take care of. the whole thing about reserves is that you could say it's for the road, but legally <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Unless you, unless you say this money is restricted, okay, there's no difference, and the auditors will tell you, between earmarking something or dedicating it. Legally, that doesn't mean anything. You're just basically saying to a layman, we intend to use this on something. But it's not binding. We can use the money on anything we want because it's not legally restricted. So that's where like our road fund, our road fund that we have to do repairs, right. that's our internal thing that we've, we've agreed to use it for. Legally, it's not binding. That's why the auditor doesn't keep it separate. The auditor folds it into the cash because it, it's not legally a restriction. It's just an internal thing. So the thing about the roads is that obviously we're gonna we're gonna try and get money going to, to do the roads. Now, the reason why I said it was gonna go up, I believe in the mayor's letter, 100,000, is because we're gonna sell a lot. We're gonna we're gonna replat that lot, hopefully, and sell it. I think it'll sell quickly. That's one way that we're gonna suddenly get a big jump in in the money. But I'm not gonna put on the budget. Property sale, hundred thousand. I didn't want to put that on there for next year because it may not happen. We're conservative, right? So that's where, in the mayor's letter, I think our cash is going to go up it's because of that sale. So, Excellent. yeah. As a student here, so explain to me how we figure the budget. How, how did you sit down and figure? Okay, here's what we're putting for the roads. Here's what we're putting for the sewer system, the water system. You've got this lot that you're selling, all that stuff. How did y'all figure that? It's like a thing that makes it supposed to happen. How well, I, well, I, I, I mean, as a business owner, I, I know how we do it and all that stuff. But right here, we do you have an imaginary things. number that, you, or not imaginary, you have a, a total number. Well, I'm sorry. Look, you you look, the other two sessions you weren't at. I, I, I've watched all this, and I, I'm not ignorant to numbers. what's going on on this. I'm asking a basic question. We go through the numbers. You're, you're the citizens here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go. You want to answer? Okay. There's five numbers that are discretionary in the entire budget. No. Most of the numbers. There's not five numbers. That, just because you put some in green and some in yellow there's doesn't mean those are discretionary. There's five numbers that are discretionary in the budget. We go through the numbers. I make estimates of what I think the numbers are going to be. I present them to the council. They look at the numbers. We make any adjustments that they think high, low, up, down. We make adjustments. That's how the budget works. So how are the greens not, why are the greens not allowed to change? I make a stab at the budget. I make estimate every line item on the budget. I present the budget. No, no, the it is, I asked a simple question. Why are the greens not allowed to change? We're, we, keep, we keep jumping around to different things. I make the simple a budget. question, why are the greens not allowed to change? I make a budget. I give it to the council. Now listen to what I'm saying. The council looks through all the numbers. The council then makes any changes they want by any number they want. They can change any number on that board. They can change any number. They look through every single number. We talk about every line on there. They can make a change on any number they want. That's what we do. So basically what you do is you look at historicals. 
where we have historically spent for water or sewer or maintenance of, I don't know, just different line items. You look at the historical data for the last two or three years and you estimate and you give yourself a cushion of margin of error or a cushion for growth. So there's the budget numbers. We go over the budget numbers. Yeah, and that's that's where we're at. Yeah. So let me let me just clarify so you can see it. That's Mayor Vargas's interpretation of what can and cannot be changed. That's that's not we don't agree. Not all of us agree with that. Where where this phrase so, can't be changed? Come where, where where do you want to change? change? For the last three months. Change the question has been what do you want to change? Well, what you started the, the last thing? council meeting by saying the ones in the green are not allowed to change. Is that no, I did not say that. You're a liar. I did not say that. You don't say that since last time you called me a liar, so you might want to watch it. You know, but so, want to go to the video and watch it again? I, oh, come on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so let's it, it, it was the Is that how you just All right, let's get back to the mission of the I mean, Does anybody want to change a number in the budget? Yeah. Yes. I, I would just like to change. I absolutely would like to have a budget workshop. Go line what by line. number would you like to change? I would like to go line by line and start with the roads and say how much money are we going We've went line roads. by line the last two months. Come on, one person at a time. So, right. Ann, we're here. This is the workshop. What number on so, what road do you want to talk about so again, right, right now? What I'm suggesting is we go through every single one of those. And we can start with the easy ones. We can start with the travel. We can start with continuing education. We can start with town functions. No. Which one do you want to start with? We're sitting I, here. I want to start with how much are we putting away for the roads? Pick a number. 100, 120, 130. Start with that and work backwards. So not travel. You want to talk about savings. Which one do you want to start with? That was travel, you, you, it was continuing education, now I'm saving for the road. Which yeah. one do you want to start with? We can go in that order. So roads. Okay. The number one. What line see, do you want? See if you, you want can find it. Might be a little hard to find it because it's not there. So. Can we find the road? No, let's see that. So it sounds like we need to add a line okay. that says, how much do you want to put away for the dilapidated roads? And again, I'm just following every other town's policy here, guys, right? Okay. So no, let's, you're not following. Look, okay, let's put a line on the bottom that says roads. All right, how much do you want to put in the line? Let's go. What do you want to put in the line? How much? I'll go by, um, so if we, we start with your estimations of 3.5 to $4.5 million, and we know that we're going to take out a 10 or 20 year bond. We know we're going to have to have a five to eight percent down, so that tells me that we probably need eight hundred. Now let's say six fifty to be conservative. Put away six fifty divided by let's say it took us four years to save up for those roads. It sounds like we need one hundred thirty, one hundred forty. Now those are just my rough guess. The open to other consideration. Okay. So you put one hundred thirty in there, which means now we're one hundred and fourteen thousand in the red. Where do you want to get the revenue? I would start from the bottom and work your way right up. I, I know you, some people think it's well, hey, I, I, think it's I think we should hire a consulting group to come in here and review it so that we don't have the discretion between all the councilmen. Please raise your hand if you have something to say. All right, where do you want to go next, Dan? 